Oh, wait, there's a hammerhead. We're not sitting out here with a dead body hanging off the back of a boat getting circled by a shark. No one's been attacked by a shark at Bondi for nearly 80 years. Uh, half past eight last night, uh, in the water, attacked by a gummy shark. Punched it in the nose to get it off me. Fired it with it a bit. Then uh, after that, yeah, pretty much it. Mate, there was no one else around, eh? Mate, uh, you've, done, you've done well. That's a shark. Not a big one because he wouldn't have had his arm left. Yeah, they're proper bite marks, mate. Like, there's, you know... 34-year-old Scott and girlfriend Kelly only recently arrived from Tasmania. Paramedics attend one very lucky man. He's passed out on the rocks down there last night and they've only just found him now. So he's been there for 14, 16 hours. I fell asleep and woke up this morning with a lot of blood on my arm, so went back in the water again this morning to clean it. How much did you have to drink last night? Three cans, that's it. Is there any reason why you, you think that you may have been passed out on the rocks for so long? Yeah, because of the bite and being unconscious, went unconscious. But for 14 hours. Bobby and H are convinced by Scott's story. Chapo is not quite so sure. You know, there's going to be sceptics. If we tell, you know, I'll go down and tell Azza now or Reedy and they'll say, nah, mate, no way you got bit by a shark. Did you see the marks? I did see the marks, but... Well, um, what would you think it was then? Well, you know, who knows? I look, just massive gouges in his arm. You know, it could have easily been a shark attack. Well, what time did you go swimming last night? Half past eight. Then after, PM. Then after that, I wake up in about 10. Wake up about 10, 10.30 this morning. Blood all over my arm. So you went for a swim at 8.30 PM last night, and you woke up on the rocks at 10 o'clock this morning. Yep. And you'd only had three cans of beer last night. Yep. For me, I'm, I could be wrong, I'm not infallible, but that looked like teeth to me. The strong pain could indicate Scott also has a fracture. Oh, oh, mate, take it mate, I've got to put the bandage on it. Yeah, right? If you keep sucking on that whistle, the pain will go away. Trust me, it's not going to go away. I've had three pain in four. And when did you have away. those? And where did you have those? Did you have those on the rocks with you? No, I had them this morning at 6 no, o'clock when I woke up. Okay, so you didn't sleep on the rocks. You've obviously been home somewhere if no, you've I didn't taken. Sleep on the rocks. Right. No, that's the story you've given us. No, no, no. You know where the cave is? Yeah. Can yeah. I see other guys up? Yeah. So, so you sleep in the cave? Yeah. How did you get up to the lifeguard tower? Is that camera Hey, Mum. How are you? It's me again. Got bit by a shark. Bondi. What a better pain. That's what you've got the green whistle for. That's pain relief. You just ain't doing nothing. Oh, well, we don't have anything stronger, unfortunately. You have to wait till you get to the hospital. OK? Wait till I finish this. I've got to admit, I've, I haven't seen too many shark attacks in my time. This is my 11th season. I've been waiting because the amount of people that now swim in the ocean with a lot of disdain for the uh, for sharks, it's going to wake a lot of people up and make them realise it's a, it is a reality. I'm just going to have a look under here, OK? Yeah, see, that's gone into the capsule of the elbow, OK? You didn't think of coming up last night? It was all a big shot, yeah, and I ran out of that water so okay. far. Yeah. While shock may have clouded Scott's memory, Kelly has more precise recollections. I knew that he went for a swim. He said to me, I'm going for a swim, babe. And I said, OK, that's OK, you go for a swim, but be careful. And then next thing I fell asleep because I, I'm a very tired person. I love my sleep and everything like every girl does. And next thing he comes to bed and sleeps and... Um, yeah, he didn't say a word, he just collapsed on the bed, you know what I mean, thinking, babe, move over. And he didn't make a word out of his mouth or anything. And I woke up this morning and I saw blood all up his arm, down his, all over his shorts and everything, and all over me. Back at Bondi, Chapo and Maxie try to piece together details of Scott's extraordinary story. Maxie, we'll go and see if there's any blood. Maybe find out a little bit more about this story. Backpackers and homeless people sometimes bunk down in the caves at South Bondi. We're just kind of collecting all these guys' belongings because, you know, even though it's not March, it might mean a lot to him, so... As for evidence of the shark attack, there's little to be found. There doesn't seem to be anything else up here, eh? Like, no blood or anything that I can see, so... 
Meanwhile, before surgery, Scott retells the story everyone wants to hear. Kelly went to sleep in the sleeping bag and I went for a dip and got attacked by a shark. I'm not blaming the shark, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, probably so, would have been about... Scott's recollections are becoming more detailed. Probably would have been about, as I said, about, about that big. You would have been. I was looking at him all right. Bloody hell, I was looking at him. Before heading into the operating theatre, Scott gets an anxious call from his dad. Yeah, I won the fight. I'm, I'm just glad to be here, that's all. Yeah, me too, brother. Yeah. M much more things can't go wrong in my life. Yeah. So I'm going up to surgery in about half an hour. Yeah, and I'm on the news at 6 o'clock down there. All right, love you, Dad. Take care. Bye. Word has spread to his family. Now it's about to spread across the country. Bondi Beach. A short time ago, he described how he thought he was going to die. Scott Blake was swimming in South Bondi last night when he got the shark right into his arm. Shark attacked me, um, grabbed hold of my arm, wouldn't let go. So I ended up punching him in the nose and trying to fight him off. I can't understand how that shark got through that net or... It's just, yeah, it's just a big shock and I'm glad to still be here for my kids and... Yeah, just happy. First one in 70 years. As Scott wheels into surgery, his story beams around the world. A shark has attacked a swimmer at Sydney's world famous Bondi Beach. It's the first such attack in 70 years. He managed to break free and escape after punching the shark on the nose. Next morning, beachgoers disregard the possible danger. Swimmers frolic in the exact spot where the attack reportedly took place. A little later, Bondi's international celebrity makes an emotional return to show off his 38 stitches. Hey, Scotty. How are you, mate? The story's spot on. Spot on, yeah. Couldn't get much more spot on. Bloody spot on. Don't cry. Well, true, but scary and it's upsetting and... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful that I'm still here. It's only a small one. Didn't look small yesterday. It's had a couple of goes at you. Do yeah. you remember it like whack, whack? Three times. Yeah, three it's, times. But it's, like, it's come from an angle. Yeah. Amazing, it's actually. It's probably a wobbling on because there's no bottom jaw. Yeah, it's, only been, it's only been bitten from the top. Yeah. So that's, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. Because if it had been a proper Noah, you would have had the bottom teeth as well. Yeah. And you wouldn't be here, mate. You would have bled yeah. to death. Real glad I came out better. Yeah, gorgeous. It's yeah. like having a fight with Mike Tyson, but I never got the ear chewed off. Curious about exactly what happened, H takes Scott and Kelly back to the scene of the attack. I decided to go for a swim just out here. Okay. Um, just past that little um, cave bit there and just out past the rocks. Oh, there. just in the storm where the storm water runs out. Yep. Yeah, I just see. This next minute, all I know is I got grabbed from the arm. Yeah. Don't know what it was, turned around. You can see a bit of grey, but not much because it's a bit dark. Yeah. And just uh, started to hit him on the nose. Ah. And just started to punch him on the nose. He kept punching him on the nose. Smart thing to do. And then he kept on, um, he let go for a couple of seconds, then he come back again. He come back for more. And then I thought, oh, I'm not going to make it out of the water here. I'm, I'm going to die here. This is it. Uh, blood coming out everywhere. Yeah. Blood everywhere, all over me. Mm -hmm. All over my shorts. I had to throw them all away. The and then Kelly, the next morning, found me in a big pool of blood. Hey, Ooh. Kelly. And that's right, yeah. That's where I thought I was going, I was dead, I thought I was dead. The details remain a little confused. Never having dealt with a shark attack, lifeguards can't fall back on experience. When I spoke to him, he genuinely believed that he'd been attacked by a shark. <laughs> or, 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 he's a tremendous con artist, one of the greats of all time. I can't understand if you fought off a shark, you'd have that much adrenaline in your body the experience I liken it to was when I was running with the bulls in Pampelona and it's, you know, you, it's a near-death experience. You could die from the bulls and, and you're not going to sleep afterwards. You, your heart rate and your adrenaline is buzzing. As Scott recuperates in a local backpackers hostel, three days of scrutiny follow. 
But as faith in Scott's story seems to be dwindling, Tom and Brooke make a dramatic discovery in Bondi's shark net. Yeah, go ahead, jet ski. Mate, we've got a massive shark in the net out here. Brave girl, man. Brave girl. The two and a half metre shark has only been in the net a day or two. Was it the same shark that attacked Scott? What, what sort of shark attack it is? Um, I think it's a great nurse. I can't believe how close it is to the shoreline. Like, we're 200 metres offshore and there's a three to four metre beast like that. People, people swim out here every day. Later that day, the shark boat arrives to clear the net. Yeah, it's probably about eight to ten feet. The shark is an endangered grey nurse. Generally considered harmless, they have bitten divers when provoked. Did the grey nurse bite Scott? Or was it a gummy shark as he claims? Some lifeguards are blaming a common but sometimes aggressive wobby gong. As the debate continues, Tom receives an anonymous phone call. A woman claims she knows the truth. Saying that she knew the guy who got attacked by a shark and he's currently in police custody and that he was a known criminal and that he was caught, you know, breaking and entering. Just because he is an alleged criminal. thief or an alleged criminal doesn't mean that he hasn't been attacked by a shark, I mean... But the anonymous informer also claims Scott's injury happened days before the alleged attack. Scott's story is getting murkier by the minute. Lifeguards call in shark expert Dennis Reed to put the case to rest. Hello, mate. Hi. Yes, Dennis, how are you, mate? It, it could be a shark bite. I wouldn't be 100% sure. Now, what I generally like to do in this case is look at the underside as well. OK. And if it's only on one side of the arm, yeah. then uh, it's a little bit... Um, well, well, it is only on one side of the arm. Yeah, Every sharks. species of shark that you're aware of has teeth on the bottom. Yep, yep, yep. And, and they're usually the thing that grabs first. So the typical behaviour of most so. of the sharks is to, to grab, grab something with the lower teeth uh -huh. and then either saw or... Uh, bite into so it with the top. There was so nothing it, underneath so here. Yep. It was only on top. We were under the presumption that wobby gongs had no bottom teeth, so right, that's okay, why yeah, we yeah, thought yeah, yeah, it was a wobby yeah, gong. But yeah. clearly, you've just um, proven us all wrong. So, is this the joy of a wobby gong? That's a wobby gong, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. about a 1.4 metre wobby gong. Yep. Can, can you tell me roughly the uh, the width of those? The, the You're looking uh, at, I'd say, three oh. quarters of an inch. Oh, look, there's no, there's no shark that I know that would have that wider, wider scrape. I'm not but, sure uh, if you've heard today um, he's been arrested, this really? gentleman, for break and enter. If I had two possibilities, one glass window yeah. and, and two possible shark fight, I'd say the probabilities would lie in favour of the uh, going through a glass window. This has got to be one of the biggest hoaxes we've ever seen down here. Let me read it to you. Bondi's bogus bite, shark attack, just a fishy line. Shark attack never occurred, and the man who made the claim has been arrested for theft. Take well, a look at him. That's one hell of a con job. Mm. I mean, he's probably having a good time now, having a good laugh, because he got away with it for a good week. Days later, Scott's girlfriend, Kelly, returns to the beach. It's a chance for Detective Inspector Bobby to wrap up the investigation. Oh, here she is. How are you? All right? How are you? Good. What's going on? Nothing. Why? Nothing? We sort of found out it may not have been a shark bite. Right. We're not really sure. Are you happy to enlighten us on anything else? What, yeah. what might have really happened? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Okay, come on, because, fill us in. Okay, um, what happened was um, when we went to um, Hobart, yeah. um, he got bitten by, um, he didn't get bitten by nothing. He um, put his arm for a window. A window? Down bon um, in Hobart, yeah. Oh, here we go. The story yeah. thickens, eh? The That's plot right. thickens. Mm -hmm. And so why did you sort of back your story up about the shark? Because, why? Because yeah. um, I, was, I was scared of him. Although I did say only 99% I was convinced. I never was quite 100% convinced. That 1% plays a big role down here. It does yeah. now. It just means that we've taken another dimension to our job. We're private detectives now. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What am I going to do? I'm going to move on with my life and start my life fresh again, though. 
Scott later pleaded guilty to break and enter charges and car theft. Head. We're not sitting out here with a dead body hanging off the back of a boat. You can circle by a shark. It's 9am on a quiet weekday. <laughs> Lifeguards receive an urgent message in the tower. What's the story now? Could be a body floating around off the golf course. A fisherman has spotted a body in the water off Bondi's treacherous cliffs. Lifeguards scramble. Unsure whether the person is dead or still alive, every second counts. Need to get out there as quick as we can. Corey and young Troy head into the unknown. The defibrillator and oxyviva are prepared for a possible resuscitation. Within minutes, Troy and Corey make a grim discovery. Yeah, okay, copy, Corey. Troy pushes a young man's body up onto the mat. It could be a rock fisherman, a drowned swimmer, a suicide. Troy and Corey can do little but look after the body until police arrive. Just a kilometre away, beachgoers are oblivious to the tragedy. Boys are taking him out, um, out to sea to wait for the police boat just so no one can see what's going on. Senior lifeguard and paramedic Bobby has been in Troy's position many times. There's a few things you don't start recess on. Bring your horse to one of the boat. Uh, that's, you don't, don't try and do anything. Don't think you're doing the wrong thing or anything. Huh? Doing the right thing, right, buddy? As the rescue helicopter observes above, there is a disturbing development. Copy, mate. Mitchell, to uh, Jet Scoot You have a, a hammerhead shark not too far away from you guys. Um, large enough to cause concern. It's large enough to cause concern, mate, so just keep your eyes open for us. Oi! It's a hammerhead! We're not sitting out here with a dead body hanging off the back of a boat. You can circle by a shark. Troy moves to relative safety on the jet ski. You have to think that the, the shark's just swimming around there because of uh, possibly blood in the water from, from the, 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 the body. So, yeah, it's all happening. Can't believe it. Despite the danger, Corey and Troy continue minding the deceased man. Waiting for the police boat. We've got the helicopter circling. Just keep an eye on us. There was a pretty decent sized hammerhead shark out here before, so hopefully he keeps watching to see if it comes back again. But, um, mate, Troy's doing a good job with the patient on the back, unfortunately. You guys know that it's going to be another 10 minutes, but uh, it's confirmed there'll be 10 minutes. After holding the man's body for 20 minutes, Corey relieves Troy. Proud of yourself, mate. You did a real good job, mate. It's not an easy thing to do, get someone out of the water like that up onto a mat, especially when it's your first time, mate. So, you know, try, try and find the positives out of it. You know, I, know, I know there aren't many. After almost an hour, water police finally arrive. I'm just pretty uh, 
uh, feel just a bit upset that, that we didn't have a chance to help help the poor guy. You know, we don't know the story behind it, but if he did fall off and accidentally, and you know, and he was was conscious there for a while, I'm sure uh, we would have had a good chance of getting him back. But I think it was just a bit too far gone. That's all we can do. A little bit rattled, a little bit rattled, especially for Troy. That was his first sort of um, time that he's dealt with a deceased patient, so um, a bit more concerned about Troy than myself, really. You know, we've chosen this as a job. We, everyone's aware of what can happen. You know, what I mean, there's a hundred different scenarios that can happen in Bondi Beach, from from drownings to shark sightings to people falling off cliffs. You know, we deal with something different just about every day. So we're aware of what goes on, but that doesn't make it any easier when it actually happens. Pretty traumatic for a, especially a young bloke. I can still remember the face of the first one. It's something that sort of sticks by. I don't know why it is with the first one, I suppose, because we've never seen something like that before. Yeah, after it, I was still in a bit of shock for um, probably a couple of hours. Didn't actually really know what to feel like. I had so many things going through my head. Just, it was very, very horrific to, to go to a situation like that. It's, um, it's something I'll definitely remember for a long time. Troy will be offered counselling, but can also rely on the simple support of the lifeguard team. The shark launches a surprise attack. Today, lifeguards have spotted something caught in the nets. You're jumping off first. No, I won't. <laughs> that won't be happening. <laughs> the suspected shark needs to be removed, dead or alive. It's a bit dodgy at the moment. It's a bit green. There's not much visibility. So it be interesting to see how we go. Quickers and bacon draw the short straw. What is it? It's a grey nurse shark, tragically a protected species. Generally considered harmless, their teeth are still razor sharp. Why would we doing that? Gases in the shark's decomposing body make it float to the surface. As bacon clowns around, the shark launches a surprise attack. Not smart. Face moment. to face with the shark, and he breathed on me, and oh, never felt more crook. It was disgusting. It was the most disgusting, hideous thing you've ever seen in your life. Two days later, anxious swimmers report an unwelcome visitor. Yeah, she's pointing. She's saying something. I don't know. She looks pretty adamant. The, the shark same. that was in the net has drifted to shore. There's a shark in the rip. <laughs> North of the middle set of flags. <laughs> you can't leave the thing there. Yeah? People are going to freak when they see it. Like, you can't leave it there. Keen to impress, trainee Maxi volunteers for the job. Everyone's happy with that scenario. So he's going to go in and get the shark, and we're all going to stand and watch. You jump down, I'll sit up and wait for you. This is a good utensil. Grab it. Yeah. We'll see how we go. But I'm excited, that's all. I'm excited. Something different. Maxi eventually discovers the lurking troublemaker. It's got to come out of the water. It's dead. It's, you know, we don't want to attract more sharks and we don't want to scare people. So uh, we'll get it out of the water as the first step. Not experienced in the art of shark rescues, Maxi and Troy attempt a technique normally reserved for unconscious swimmers. person, you roll the board over and flip their arm and use the board to pull their momentum to pull them back onto the board, but I don't think that'll work with a dead shark. They seem to be trying that. Got it oh, it's Getting it to shore proves harder than imagined. <laughs> he had a big rope as he was getting ready to go in the water and he was still in some fancy knots with it. I said, mate, just go in and pull the bloody thing out. Troy and Maxi resort to a two-man drag technique. Mate, not every day at Bondi we, uh, we pull a shark out of the water. The only thing under attack right now 
of beachgoers' nostrils. It yeah, Dean, take it up the beach, get the boys on the shovels, and that's it, mate, I reckon, give it a burial. Grave digging isn't in the lifeguard manual. Trying to put that shark in a plastic bag and take it up to a bin would be, be a horrible, horrible thing to do. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Say a couple of words, Patsy. I don't know. I'm not really good with words, mate, but... Uh, rest in peace. He's, he's rest in peace, mate. He's had a good life, by the sounds of it. Let's just call him Frank. Frank. See you, Frank, mate. Nice knowing you. A man is swimming right where the shark was last seen. The lifeguards receive reports about a shark in the south corner. Yeah, just saw, I just saw it, like shark. It was right under me. You see the point in the nose and then tail, and it's just like, it's unmistakable. Isn't there that guy who had his hand bitten off like a few years ago out here? Yeah, get out there, get the ski in the water. Lifeguards launched the jet ski. Straight away, put my hand up to jump on the jet ski, which, you know, looking back, <laughs> there's a shark out there, it's probably not the best idea. The last incident at Bondi was in 2009, when a man lost his right hand. Some guy said she saw a shark. Yeah, right. Right. Another confirmed sighting, we're going to hit the alarm. Many shark sightings prove to be false, so lifeguards won't set off the shark alarm until they have more certainty. People all assume whenever they see something splash or dark in the water, it's always a shark. But when you have a few people coming up to you and adamant that there's a shark in the water, we'd be mad not to, you know? Like, people are sometimes your best assets. Yeti sends Bondi's young guns to work. Trainee Tommy warns swimmers along the shoreline. While second year lifeguard Ryan notifies surfers and swimmers. Yeah, just to catch all the swimmers. We've had a possible shark sighting, so if you'd like to return to shore, we are close to the beach. Sending Tommy on the beach to do announcements and, and let everyone know there was a shark. Um, Pretty exciting for him, I think. He's, he's only new and having a shark come to work is probably not your everyday thing for a lot of people. We don't want the public to think we just sound the shark alarm off to suit ourselves. We do it in a way, hopefully, that we don't cause a mass panic. When I'm on the jet ski, first port of call is to get everyone out of the water, you know? Ryan, that's it. If there is something there, you don't want anyone turning into lunch. Aside from a few die-hard surfers who refuse to come in, the water is now clear. Then a phone call comes into the tower. From the lifeguards, true speaking. A man is swimming right where the shark was last seen. Look to the rocks on the right side of the Bondi. Bondi Central. Yeah, the pool. Jet yep. Can you head back to the icebergs? There was one base swimmer out the back that we really needed Ryan to get to quickly. Yeah, Jet ski, it's the guy with the blue swimming cap next to the pool near the rock. The man makes a quick exit from the water. The idea of a shark had got into his head and he was pretty keen to get on and get back to the beach. Yeah, well, we've got him now. He's got a blue swimming cap on bathing. We got him. After 30 minutes and no sign of the shark, lifeguards give the all clear. Yeah, I think half an hour did it. <laughs> Thing will be right. <laughs> We were pretty confident that the uh, the shark had just coming in to say hello and he's made his exit. The Westpac rescue chopper sounds a warning siren. Small and big dramas regularly play out on Bondi stage. Last year saw one of the biggest in Bondi's history. An amazing tale of survival has a shark attack on Bondi in 80 years. The victim, years. a local surfer, surfer at Bondi, managed to paddle just into shore. Like something had sucked the meat off his bone like it, you, you would a ch chicken drums. The surfer certainly thought he wasn't going to make it out of this ordeal alive. A year after being attacked by a shark, Glenn returns to Bondi. 
Yeah. Yeah. Go tell us. Bacon. bacon. How are you? Nice Sorry, to meet you. Bacon. 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 Tom. Tom, how are you? Good, mate. How are you? Good to meet you. This just works off the muscles in my arm, so yeah. it's just, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like the latest technology. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Like, you can hold a coffee, coffee cup and, you know, you can do that pinch. And... What about when you That's the some suburbs talking there. I like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But when you look down, what was, your whole arm was still there, but was a big chunk taken out? Oh, the ham was just hanging just off. Hanging it was hanging off by that much bit of skin and bone was poking out and that was all did you just like, open. Did you feel like you were going to pass out or were you pretty calm? Yeah, I screamed, obviously. Yeah. That was kind of the first thing that happened. And then I just, you know, you just do your best in that situation yeah. to, to get in, so... The shark attack so, on Glenor just took place a year ago and the details are still vivid. I got home late from work. Probably went surfing a bit later than I usually would. So it was about 7.30 when I got in the water. The attack was never caught on camera, but CCTV footage taken at the same time shows a grey and overcast evening. Just as I was paddling back out after I'd um, caught a wave, yeah, I just uh, I got um, grabbed by something. I actually thought it was another surfer in this split instance that happened. I thought I'd paddling towards a wave. I thought oh, someone's trying to someone's trying to stop me get a wave. So I tried to yank my arm back, and then I just got um, yeah pulled under the water and shook around. It took a while to realise what happened, um, but got back onto the board. Bits where I was in the water, you know, paddling back in, I don't really like talking about that, you know, what went through my mind and felt like forever, but it wasn't. I've just been sort of the surfers at one guy's and his hands taken off. When I got onto the beach is, is when the, you know, the community at Bondi really came together and to really help me out. A couple of Frenchmen who were, who were surfing nearby and a couple of local surfers um, ran up the beach and, and helped me out of the water and um, put a tourniquet on my arm and that saved my life. I think if someone we was brave tonight is him. You can believe me when you see this guy, he, he was very, very brave. Glenn lost almost a third of the blood in his body. Donated blood from the Red Cross first kept him alive. He then received 75 litres of transfusions as surgeons tried to save his hand. His story convinces Bondi's lifeguards to donate blood themselves. Yeah, I've donated blood a lot, actually. Yeah, you get your own little card, it's pretty cool. Get some lollies at the end of it. You get a Mars bar, you definitely do get a Mars bar. Yeah. You know that you're helping people out there as well, all the hospitals and I starve for blood all the time. That's good. The attack is fresh in lifeguards' minds. Westpac rescue chopper sounds a warning siren. Beardy saw the shark before it disappeared from view. The chopper crew updates lifeguards. You uh, scared it and it ran into the rocks there, so uh, we've lost track of it in the dark, so uh, it's somewhere in this city, but it hasn't come back to the sand bank at this stage. Lifeguards remain vigilant in case the shark comes around the point and into Bondi. If you see anything else, give us a yell. If not, all clear. Bondi lifeguards clear. If a shark wants to bite you, it's going to bite you, especially if there's people around. So it might have just been having a look. Might come around here, we don't know. It's, it's very hard to tell from where we are. They swim so deep. Just hours later, lifeguards receive disturbing information. See the waves out the back there? Eh? Oh, check it out. I just had a couple of plays come up. There's something moving out the back off about third ramp. They thought the Palestine was a There's something there, eh? Yeah. With hundreds in the water, lifeguards are poised to set off Bondi's shark alarm. Look how close it is to there. Are we going, Abedi? But before swimmers are sent into panic, the culprit reveals itself. Yeah, it's huge. It's going mad. The shark is, in fact, a seal. We're fine, mate. Our friendly seal. How, how funny. Yeah, he's just throwing a, a big fish around that he's caught. He's just playing with it. 